Okay, we're back into idle again in Python and we're back into interactive shell. We're not using the non-interactive window this time. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a go at creating a small bit of text on the screen. So I'm going to use the print command again. I'm going to open the brackets and speech marks which is where the details are going to go in. And I'm going to create a quick joke here so it's going to have a question. The question is going to be what goes clip? And then the answer is going to be a horse. Okay. I close that and I press enter and it runs. And that works, but you can see it's all squished onto the same line. So we can change this a little. Now, because I'm using the interactive window, I can't go back and change it, but I can copy it. So I just highlight the text. See, I missed the P off there. Okay, now if I go back to here just before the answer and I use a backslash and N and then I run the same bit of code again, you will see we get quite different results. It splits the question and the answer onto two different lines. Now, the reason for this is print, you can see it's listed differently here, is a function. It's basically an instruction to the computer to do something. And everything that's in the speech marks, it's going to print as it is. But to create more than one line, we need to kind of get out of that and put some normal formatting in. So this backslash n is what's called an escape sequence. It kind of escapes from the um, normal Python instructions and allows us to add some formatting. And there's a few other ones. So again, if I do the same piece of instruction, we can go back. And again, we can put the uh, backslash n in. You'll notice I'm not worried about how close it is to the letter in front or behind because it's not actually going to display in the output. But there's a couple of extra ones we can try here. So one of the ones we can try is we can put a backslash t. Let's see what happens with this one. Okay, you can see the question is now indented quite a long way. So if I wanted to make that the same again, I can highlight the whole of this this time. If I wanted to make them both be indented, for instance, we could have next line and then indented, so they'd both be indented, that would work. There is one or two others. One of the problems, again, with the way that we use the formatting on the functions within Python is that we're already using the brackets and the speech marks. If I want to write something here to show you, um, if I wanted to put horse and speech marks, you see it's no longer green because Python assumes that's something you don't want it to print. So if we wanted to print it with the speech marks in, then what we have to do is we have to use the backslash before the speech marks and then the computer knows it can kind of ignore those and treat them as speech marks rather than an instruction for Python. So you can put it on both sides like that. You should see when it runs this time. We see the speech marks, but again, we don't see the backslash. Again, I'm going to copy this one more time. And the other one is the backslash itself. So if I actually want a backslash to show, for instance, let's put it, what goes clip. I don't know why we want a backslash in there, but if we do, we want to put two in like this. And we should see when I run this now. Okay, we got one of them showing. So one of them, it, it treats this formatting, but because there's two, it knows the second one it can run. So this comes in quite important. One of the projects um, on Python um, that we'll come to later is writing a text adventure, and you will want formatting on there, so this is a key part of this. Within the functions, we can also use it for math. So we already talked about, if I do some like print, 300 or 400 plus 300 and enter it, we get the output 700 and that's because the function's returning the result of 400 and 300 but sometimes I might want to see the equation as well so we could do something like print speech marks because we wanted to print it 300 plus let's do the same way around 400 plus 300 equals now we'll print that but it won't do a calculation on that. So we want to separate this so we've got the actual answer as well. So we're going to put a comma, and then we're going to do 400 plus 300. So the first part of that 
will get printed out as effectively as text. It's a string. And the second part of that will get printed out as an answer. So we press enter now. You'll see it 400 plus 300 equals 700. And we can try that with the division symbol. We can try that with the asterisk for multiplication. We can try it with the minus and see what different results we get. But we've looked at functions. We've looked at escape sequences, which are these bits of the uh, backslash. And we've started to consider how we can use it to have sections that are printed directly as they are and bits that are actually worked out.